Anyways, we moved into this older home but was plenty nice for me. The layout was a bit strange in my opinion. You walk into the kitchen from the carpet and directly to the left is a pantry and next to that was my bedroom. Through my bedroom you could reach the master bedroom and through that room, the other room that could go to the third bedroom. They were all connected with access to the living room or kitchen. Really weird. So my room was the first bedroom and was pretty small but it was mine and I loved it. We previously lived in a small single wide, which was cramped for my parents, two sisters and myself. Well, I loved my room initially but I remember liking it less and less each day. I began to get scared of that room. I would go in it to play with my toys but only with the door open and I would sit just in the doorway. My parents repainted my room for me to try to help me like it more. Bright yellow. No idea why that color. It didn't help. In a desperate loving attempt to help me, my parents gave me the big master bedroom and they took my little room. Cool. But the master bedroom had no windows. WTF. I don't know how long I had been staying in the room but one night, I woke up in the middle of the night. No windows. Pitch fleabing black. No bueno for a 7 year old or however old I was in second grade. I woke up to the pitch black and instantly had this horrible feeling. Chills. The feeling that I was being watched from the blackness. Being watched from the darkness of my room. I pulled the covers over my head and just waited. I could feel the presence of something. Something evil standing right beside my bed. Now I'm not super religious but I do believe in God. I remember laying there praying that if I did that night, if I would go to heaven. I repeated it over and over and over just waiting for the end. I was absolutely terrified. I said that till I fell asleep and woke up the next morning. That was my encounter. My mom told me later her experiences. I'll make it quick. She would be in the back doing whatever and hear a thump. Go in the living room and a candle would have fallen off of the coffee table. Put it back. Go back to whatever and hear it again. Go back. Candle on the floor. Freak out. Get gun. Call my granddad. Clear house. Clear. Clueless. Stuff like that. Our lights in the house at one point began to flicker quite a bit. Parents called an electrician who came and went into the attic to investigate. Dude came down looking white as a ghost. Would not tell my mom what he saw but said he would never ever come back to that house. That's really about it that we encountered that we remember. Mom said when we moved, she found a Ouija board in the closet. Moved out of the house and within a month, it burned to the ground. I used to work in a nursing home and by used to, I mean up until the beginning of March, I worked there. I worked night shift and multiple occasions I've been sitting at the nurse's station and out of the corner of my eye, I would see someone walk into a residence room, always the same room. I'd go check it out and both patients are asleep and no one else is in there. I saw a man sleeping in a bed one night when I worked the rehab side. Went to go find a nurse that usually worked over there because I couldn't find a chart and wanted a report and she told me the room was empty and had been for a couple days. We both went to check it out and there's no one there, but the bed is made. We had no male staff working that night either. Thought I was dreaming but it was either an out of body experience or me being possessed by a demon. When I was 12, I woke up sometime after dawn and had a strong urge to call for help. So I got up and started going down to my parents room. I get to the stairs and feel extreme cold in my body, turn around and look into the bathroom, the doors were open, and see this white tall thing with something that resembled an onion for its head, with two holes where the eyes should be. It had freakishly long limbs as well. At this point I'm like, nah. I always react sarcastically it helps me relieve myself and started running to my parents room and felt this thing following me behind. I get to my parents and start screaming right next to my mother, trying to wake her up but she didn't budge even though she was quite a light sleeper. I didn't turn around but it felt like something was dragging me with great force and suddenly, I was back in my bed, I remember basically being teleported from all the way downstairs back to my room. This repeated four more times with that thing appearing closer and closer to my parents room, 
like it was blocking me but giving me just enough space to run next to it before it gives chase. After the fifth time, I felt infuriated and took a golf club sitting in a bag in the hallway and thought to myself that, if I see this thing again, I will proceed to slam it till I was sure it suffered a great deal and died. Except this time, I got to my parents room without trouble and didn't see a thing. That is when both of my parents woke up and saw me there standing with the 5 iron shaking, holding it in a position that looked like I was going to bludgeon them to death. I did end up at the psychiatrist afterwards but he said I'm a perfectly normal boy and these nightmares should go away soon. Years later, I'm still trying to make sense of this but I think I must have stopped breathing in my sleep or that something else was terribly wrong and this was my brain's way of telling me to wake the fleep up and seek help by making the most intense sleep paralysis of my life. I've had plenty of them before and after this event and I was accustomed to them. I've had dreams like this before. I believe they are called nesting dreams. They are a series of waking dreams that can also involve sleep paralysis. They usually get more terrifying. At least for me. As they continue. My husband and I constantly hear each other calling out for the other. For example, he will be in the garage and will hear me saying, babe, or his name. I will hear him say, baby cakes or my name or any variation of our names or nicknames. It will also happen when one of us isn't home. We will also hear the other messing around in a room that we aren't in, like he will hear me in my office, when I'm actually sitting in the bath, on the opposite side of the house, or again, not even home. It seems harmless, but feels ominous, if that makes any sense. This has followed us to four or five houses apartments, yay, military life. We wonder if it's something that is attached to one of us, or to one of the many items that we've gotten second, third, fourth hand. Either way, now that we're in a fairly permanent place, and it's still with us, I fully intend to smudge our home with Sage and Palo Santa. This reminds me of a friend's story when she went hiking with her husband. He's a quicker hiker than her so they got separated but were going to the same location so no biggie. After a while. She hears him yelling her name from up the trail. He sounds like it's urgent, so she starts running up the trail and smack into her husband. He was running down the trail because he'd heard her screaming his name. Excuse the long post but it's quite a long story. I had something happen when I worked in a clothes shop. I normally worked on the shop floor but had been put in the stockroom on this particular day, as someone had called in sick. The stockroom was a huge room with lots of aisles of floor to ceiling racks with clothes hanging on them, generally trousers jeans on the bottom row and tops above, with a small gap between the levels. I was alone in there picking stock using a handheld scanner, walking up and down the aisles when I heard footsteps in the next aisle. Knowing that I was the only one rotated to be there, I called out, hello. No response. The footsteps start heading back down the aisle towards the front. So I duck down a bit and luck through the gap between the top and bottom racks. Can't see anyone and figured I was too slow and they'd already left that aisle. So I check my scanner and see which aisle I have to go to next. And it turns out to be near the door on that side of the stock room. So I figure as I haven't seen anyone cross the front of my aisle. Or heard the door open and close. Big, heavy doors with a code lock. That whoever it was will be somewhere between where I currently was and the door. So I look down every aisle on the way to my destination and there's no one around. I start to think that one of my friends is trying to prank me, by hiding under clothes in one of the aisles, so I just called out, are you trying to jump out at me? You need to walk more quietly if that's your plan. And carried on picking stock. About 5 minutes later, I'm towards the back of an aisle again and heard footsteps in the next aisle again, so instead of calling out. I just look through the gap. No one there, so I just assume friend has ducked down. I carry on, still thinking my friend is going to jump out at me, so I play along and next time I hear footsteps, they're in the aisle I'm in, so I face towards the back wall and keep picking. Then there's a tap on my shoulder and a quiet female voice that said, found you. So I do a really fake, omg, you made me jump friend. Turn around giggling and there is no one there. There is nowhere that a person could have gone in the split second when I turned around. 
So I was more than a little bit freaked out at this point. So I decided to nope out of there and take my break a bit early. I bumped into the stockroom manager as he was coming out of a manager's meeting. And he asked if I was okay. So I explained what had just happened and he laughed and said, Oh you've met Daisy then. She doesn't play with everyone. So you're honored that she chose you. Apparently, some of the stock team have had similar experiences so nicknamed their new friend Daisy. A couple of them had had my experience and a few others had seen a figure in some of the aisles too, but that whatever Daisy was, she's harmless and just likes to play.